Okay, so earlier I was talking about black walnut, pardon me, black cherries, wild well, black cherries, not black walnut up that way. Um, this is what the uh, twigs look like at this time of the year, again early April. So you can see they're starting to break out of their coverings and um, to open into leaves. And this one is unlikely to get any further because this is the uh, cherry that came, was cut down, I showed you earlier, with the dark bark on the inside and the lighter bark on the outside. It makes fine grain for um, uh, furniture. My mother had some cherry furniture. I, I still good memories of it. Okay, but what I wanted to focus on here, it's not sticking in the way, Further up, you can see how rough the bark is. To get access to that bark, I would use, um, to get to the inner bark, because that's what we want is the inner bark. To get to there, I'd have to use a draw knife to clear off the outer bark, because it's, it's basically, I won't call it dead, but I don't know, it, it's not vibrant, and it doesn't seem to have much quality for medicine. So we'll leave it at that. And so that usually I would cut like this, and pray that it isn't too wide, but let's see, it could go that way, and then this way, and that way. And then we have an opportunity to find out if this idea is going to work so far so good. Now you see there's, there's the gray bark, there's the green bark, and uh, let's see, if we go a little deeper, there's a pretty light sunlight to be doing this. But Amazing what a little tool can do if you hold it like near the tip so you're getting the action, you're not getting it back here on the hinge. So now you see it's turning a little bit lighter. Essentially, what I'm looking for now is to get this outer bark off. It's not too hard to get off in this case. But again, I'm doing this in the spring when the sap's moving. And it's definitely, as we saw in those buds, they were actually, there was definitely sap moving. So now we have basically the green layer, which is beautiful and it has good quality. And then we have the sort of brown layer. There, that's more the brown and a pale one. And then what we're getting to there is wood. This is bark, this is wood. There's a lot of more information about that. We'll stay at that one at the moment. Now this here, again, is the one that you don't boil it. Um, you only bake it up in small pieces and pour boiling water over it. At which point it um, gives you its quality, you know, in about you know, 10 minutes or so. Because it is a bark rather than a leaf, it's a little thicker. But um, you don't boil it. It activates some parts in there that don't need activating. You don't need them. And, uh, I mean, or you can just, you know, put it in your mouth and see, it sort of breaks up. So it probably would make a good flower, but I'm not sure about it. Yeah, I wouldn't want to just leave it. There. I mean, I could, but... And I'd like to come back later and actually get a harvest of this, because again, it's really good for finger throat and, and for sore throat. When I first came up here 50 years ago, there was a store, I think it was Murray's, general store on the corner, um, across from the train station. And they um, they had cough syrup, and it was um, white pine and, and black uh, cherry. And I always remember that, because I had never seen anything like that before, except those, what were those brothers, um, cherry, co cherry cough drops? Smith Brothers, I think it was. And they took these two bearded guys and, and, and um, cough drops. Your size by your size and that back. So a little lozenges in there and you sucked on them and your throat got felt better. And it had wild black cherry in it. So mm. So now I think it's time to go back up because as you notice, the sun is heading further westward. We used to sit in the winter it sets over there somewhere. Now we're up to there in April and then it's gonna be all the way up there. It's been so beautiful at night, evening. Wish you could see one too. Hope you are. In the future.
So you can see here, these buds, which were closer to the top, and this branch broke off as I hit this one here. Um, again, uh, balsam poplar is very uh, brittle in that sense. Um, so these I'd like to gather in the next couple of days and before they open, I think you'd get more moisture in them and it's, it's more the resin I'm looking for. And for that, I need to use a high percentage alcohol, like 90%, to dissolve the resins because they're hydrophobic. How's that for a big word? Hydrophobic, hydro, water, phobic, like a phobia. Um, resin doesn't like water. It won't do anything except just, yeah, you're there, I'm here. That kind of an energy. <laughs> um, as you know, compared to putting it in oil and it goes, oh yeah, I can melt into you. Or alcohol, 90% alcohol. And I go, oh yeah, here I am too. And it's a really good strong medicine, especially for the throat. It's, um, I also like to do it in uh, two parts of the balsam poplar tincture and one part honey, raw honey. Just warm it up enough and stir it enough to it's, and then put in a little bottle and just a drop or two in the back of the throat. And, oh, what a wonderful change. <laughs> well, see, with throats, and we're talking about throats and the fact that trees who are part of, grow out of earth and sunlight and all the rain and the snow and ice and, and all, um, they actually have medicines for us. They actually, you know, we don't have to depend on some big, dare I say it, pharmaceutical company uh, that only came into existence uh, less than 200 years ago. And um, for our health, because Earth is here to provide our health. And it's, it's like the people who used to live here, the Algonquins, they didn't have drugstores. I mean, I liked people who work in the drugstores, but let's, it wasn't that long ago that we had, didn't have drugstores and people lived here and made it through the winter. And with a lot less than we have, ain't it so, ain't it so. Ah, good thoughts that arise here. Walking in the forest, the edge of the forest. It's like when I was moved here 50 years ago, this was a, eh, totally clear. I mean, that cherry is old, but it's not that old. It's less than 50 years. It's a wonderful knot in that branch there. And the pond wasn't here, it was all an alder swamp. You can see the alders on the far side there. They're growing in moisture and then just beyond them or in the middle of them, in places is the, uh, is the stream. It's flowing from upstream at the old beaver pond up that way uh, on Stanley's land. Stanley and Anna Mary's, yeah, land. Um, to through there on the far side, the, the Ministry of Natural Resources came in and says, yeah, you can put a pond in, but we don't let you put the pond in the stream because it'll heat up the stream too much. So it, it's called a, a side pond. So the stream is on the side and we have a pipe coming in over there that's upstream and then flows in and then another one going that way so it can flow back out, but it's not, you know, heating the hole. Um, because it's healthier. But at the same time, when it was dug, we found there were at least a dozen springs in the water. I mean, in the ground. That's why alders, they love water. They're a good sign that there's water around. Now, sometimes they're on a hill, and I haven't tried digging to find out if it's true or not. <laughs> but they used to have all sorts of trees growing down here, and a lot of them got eaten, chewed off, and dragged away by the beavers that live somewhere over that way. They move occasionally. <laughs> okay, still have these pieces and we can even use them to hold on. <laughs> oh, your shoulder there, young man. <laughs> it's a, it, um, an ash tree. And it's really, it's a nice big tree. It's got a very interesting curve as, it, as the branches come out from their stem. Right. They say the, uh, the people of the North lands in, in Europe say that uh, the tree of the world, Yggdrasil, an ash tree. Uh, big Iggy, Iggy and his family. <laughs> Iggy and her family. 
Maybe he's part of our family. Certainly our neighbor. This is another balsam poplar. Just like this one over here. And this one here is a, this one here is a sugar maple. And let's see. Yep. That's about that's about all I can see right here. Other than these um these are um, balsam fir. You can see they have flat needles, just totally flat on the side, and then flat on this side. You can see the dark green here, and there's a white stripe. Let's get a little more sunlight on that. Up the bottom. That's one way to identify it, and that's about how how big the uh, long they are. And they're um, they're not prickly at all. They're rounded tips. And I think they also, if I remember, I can pick one off. May I please? Okay. Thank you. They leave a little pocket where the leaf was. I'll have to look into that more. <laughs> and this bark looks like that. It's very smooth. And it often gets some um, uh, resin pockets in it, which are very medicinal as well. And it has a good quantity of vitamin C in, in the uh, needles and some in the bark as well. And there again, that's another throat medicine and lung. Good medicine to grow here. You can gather your own. You can work cooperatively with others to make these uh, medicines available to other people elsewhere. You want to don't have the luxury of being able to live in a rural area like this. These times it certainly is a luxury. <laughs> Don't think about that. <laughs> oh, let's see. Should we look up anything on, on just the qualities before I do any sure. more moving? Look who I found here. An old friend. We're looking forward to sharing some more time together. Okay, that's the cover. This is designed, the cover itself was designed by uh, Beth Kennedy of Rockingham. And she did the spine as well. And the back. Burnstown Publishing House. Cover painting by Kathy Ann Haycock. And uh, the, but the painting here. That's the cover painting by Kathy Haycock. Then you see it has the edible and herbal qualities of northeastern woodland trees. And that's my name, Robbie Hanna Anderman. Or Harvey Hanna Anderman. Depends which part of the, uh, the, the territory is that the, uh, the people who spoke the Anderman language um, handed out names such as that. So I, it depends. Anyway, illustrated by Hilke is where I'm wanting to go. So you can see we open it like that and then we have basswood. Ah, I can see basswood right here. I see an ash though right there. That's a big ash that we were talking about. In fact, I think there's two of them here. Um, let's see, we're actually looking for balsam poplar. Again, this is the sixth printing. On the sixth printing, we actually, um, Hilka was kind enough to draw a, a bud. If I can sell all these buds here, she drew a bud. And so, in the sixth edition, you do things when you can, and I do things when I can, and when it really says, oh, it's got to happen. So the bud would be normally be there. Hmm. And I'll have to be resin, so we won't lose our page. In the early spring, buds. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Balsam poplar, pol populus balsamifera, balm of Gilead, or bam magilly, pupier baumier. So we'll leave that part alone. And what we want to talk about is the buds here. In the early spring, balsam poplars can be distinguished by the sweet, spicy aroma of their buds. This is the time when the buds are most resinous and ready to be harvested. Probably easier to talk without the, uh, the cherry in my mouth. The buds are rich in salicin and have some of aspirin's pain-relieving effects. Chewed fresh. 
The buds have a very pungent, clove-like flavor that lingers for hours in the mouth, with the resins often sticking to the teeth. Something to look forward to. Especially if you want the qualities to go stay there on that spot of tooth. The buds are used internally for long-standing coughs, subacute and chronic bronchitis, chronic catarrh, kidney and urinary problems, poor digestion, rheumatism, scurvy, leucoria, and as a stimulating tonic. Here. The resin on and in the buds is not water soluble, so a tincture must be made by putting an ounce or two of bruised buds. I don't bruise them, just putting them together is good enough for me. Maybe it would, you can try both. Into a pint of food grade alcohol and letting it sit for two weeks or longer. A teaspoon to a tablespoon, according to age, may be taken three or four times daily. Take a sip, or just touch it to your tongue first, is my opinion. It's strong. And, you know, if you, if you know you need it and it feels so good, you take more. But don't take it too much at once. Yeah, you know, moderation in all things, including moderation. <laughs> Learned that on the streets of Woodstock, New York. <laughs> An excellent cough syrup is made by adding one-third honey to two parts tincture. The bud tinctures have also been shown to reduce excess lactation when breast milk production exceeds the demand of the baby or babies. It also helps during weaning. Maybe the taste gets in there. The buds have vulnerary wound healing properties and have long been used in a salve for burns, sunburns, wounds, arthritic sores, bed sores, frostbite, skin diseases such as eczema, and as a kind of homemade Vicks vapor rub. Okay. And as a kind of homemade Vicks vapor rub, you rub it inside your nostrils or on the chest to loosen the cold. Yeah, I often will take it, like I'll put it on, uh, say, my knee, and then I still have some of my fingers, so I always go underneath at least and... <sighs> More air, more oxygen. Okay, where are they? As a na nasal salve, it's been inhaled to relieve nasal congestion since it is stimulating and invigorating to the tissues of the respiratory passages. A handful of buds was traditionally boiled in deer or bear fat by the native people. A similar fragrant healing and soothing salve can be made by simmering the buds in a cup of lard or pure vegetable shortening or coconut oil. Strain it and allow it to cool and set in suitable small jars. The buds can also be steeped in good quality vegetable oil. Olive oil has strong extractive qualities. That would help draw the, uh, the resins. There we are. And the oil added to massage oil um, gives soothing pain relieving benefits and a pleasant aroma. I don't know if anyone would swoon for it, but I've, I've seen people go, Oh, that's so familiar. It reminds me of spring on the farm. Okay. Another oil extracting method is to fill a wide mouth canning jar to within an inch or two of the top with the buds, then pour olive or other oil into the jar until it's nearly full. Put it in a sunny location and leave it for a month or so. Then strain it. Hot, soapy water or more oil is needed to get the resins out of the jar afterwards. Very true. I find oil works really good and a little bit of warmth. The soapy water was getting frustrating. But the, or, since I, I do this every year, I just save the jar. So I'm not going to get everything out. But you can get it off your fingers with a little bit of olive oil. It comes off real easy. And then soap and water if you want to get the oil off your fingers. Gather the buds in February and March. Well, here we are in April and they're still gatherable if I do something with them in the next couple of days. Dry them in the shade before they sprout. They contain a yellow pigment, which you could see before. Essential oil, phenoglycosides, such as populin, salicin, and tannin, flavones, and albumin. The resulting oil can be added to keep other ointments from going rancid. A side note, I have noticed that these buds form during the summer, yet they do not have the sticky fragrant resin on them until later in the winter. I imagine many good qualities are already in the buds while forming, yet they'd also be missing many as well, as the resins contain qualities of great merit. 
deer suet salve with balsam poplar buds has been known to be a very effective application for severe burns. When it is applied cold, it is reputed to stop pain almost immediately. It's also been applied to sprained and strained muscles. Leaf buds can be eaten every day to help stave off degenerative gum diseases like gingivitis and pyorrhea. It is likely that regular application of bee propolis tincture would also work for this, as propolis is often made from balsam poplar resin. Dried buds may be burned on charcoal or a hot stove as a purifying incense. Heated fresh buds that are then squeezed will give forth a goo that has made a strong glue for binding feathers onto arrow shafts. The seeds, buds, and twigs are important foods for numerous birds and mammals, such as moose, deer, elk, beaver, hare, and other small rodents. There you got a section of the human tree about the buds that are in harvest now. Hello! Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> Moving in. Reminds me of a song. No, that's not that one. You, you want to <laughs> the Moving Day song by the Holy Modal Rounder? Let's have it. Okay, let's have it. This I learned in Kenny Mandel's apartment in, in Lower East Side, at least. Uh, probably somewhere on East Coast. Um, in Lower Manhattan. Uh, anyway, this song, Holy Modal Rounder. The. Oh, yeah. You're singing too. Because it's moving day, moving day. Pick up your troubles right off the floor. Pack them up and move them out the door. Because it's moving day, moving day. When you can't pay your rent, gotta sleep out in a tent. Because it's moving day. I love you. <laughs> I've been there, done that. What a blessing that we get to be here now. You too, eh? Just flew in and it's just perfectly with everybody that you hear. Mm. Think it works? Beautiful. Flying off. Probably pretty long, right?